We can openly share the products of our scientific work using two kinds of repositories, repositories for data and repositories for code. Repositories for data can be divided in general purpose repositories which allow scientists to deposit their material independently from topic or institution, for example Zenodo or Figshare. Domain-specific repositories which allow scientists to upload only data related to a specific scientific field. These repositories are usually operated by a professional organization or a group of researchers. For example, Gene Expression Omnibus by the US National Institutes of Health or Campbell by the European Bioinformatics Institute. And finally, institutional repositories, which allow only scientists working at that institution to upload their material. There are institutional repositories at many universities, like for example for research scientists at Texas Universities or Politecnico di Milano. Data repositories usually provide a digital object identifier or DOI. A DOI is basically a code made of numbers and letters, like the one you see here that identifies our shared material in a unique and permanent way. This allows other scientists both to easily find our material and to cite it in their publications. The main repositories for code are GitHub, GitLab and Bitbucket. What do these repositories have in common is version control, which is a system that keeps track of the changes in the code over time. Version control has several advantages. We do not need to rename our files for each version, so we can avoid confusion. We can correct bugs or errors by easily comparing our current version with previous versions. And it is great for collaborative work because team members can work on separate parts of a project and then merge them together without compromising the original version. One important thing to notice is that code repositories do not provide a DOI. So, to make our code citable, we can link the code repository to a data repository and get a DOI for our code release. Finally, we have to take care of two important things when we upload the data or code to repositories. First, we have to add a license. The material we put online is automatically protected by copyright, so in theory nobody can use it. This is why we have to add a license, to allow other scientists to use our material and to determine the conditions under which we want other scientists to use our material. And finally, we have to add information to our material so that other scientists know what it is about. In the case of data, we can add metadata describing characteristics of the data, how data was collected or how derived data was computed from original data. In case of code, it is important to add documentation, such as comments in the code, readme files in repositories, or websites describing the various components of the code. So, thanks to data and code repositories, we can make our material open. But how do we make our workflows reproducible? Let's have a look at it in the next video.